So we're going to talk for a minute about the use of POCUS for pediatric upper extremity injury detection and specifically fracture detection. The current study was published in Pediatric Emergency Care. It did feature a single operator and looked at their test characteristics as compared to the gold standard of x-ray. So in this study, they enrolled 106 pediatric patients with upper extremity injuries, 47 of which were distal forearm injuries, 21 of which were elbow injuries, 24 were hand, and then a few others as well. What they found was an overall sensitivity of POCUS for fracture detection of 88.3%, a specificity of 87%. They did a subcohort analysis of distal forearm injuries, and they found there the sensitivity was 96.9%, and the specificity was 93.3%. And of course, this comes on some excellent pediatric distal forearm literature that was published in 2023. Um, the two trials to look at are here. And interestingly enough, one of these was a functional trial, and then the other one was comparing the accuracy of X-ray to POCUS. And interestingly enough, the accuracy was actually higher in the POCUS arm than in the X-ray arm, which starts to raise the question, are we using a good reference standard? In other words, we're comparing everything always to X-ray, but if X-ray is actually the inferior test, what does that mean for test characteristics like those shown in this study? Okay, and just briefly, how do we perform this exam? So the approach that's been described is a long axis approach with six different views over the pediatric distal forearm. Um, it is shown uh, in these images as well. Your, your probe is going to be oriented in the long axis or the sagittal axis with respect to the bone. And you will go up and down the forearm and do sweeps or fanning or tilting of the probe back and forth to interrogate the bone. What you're looking for is a break or a cortical step off, or in the case of a pediatric buccal fracture, perhaps a, a angulation or a bend in the bone, and those are going to be your examples of pathology. And with regards to the elbow, one of the key areas to look for is a joint effusion. We look for that in the olecranon fossa, or the posterior aspect of the elbow, and we can see two examples of joint effusions, one of which is a clear hemarthrosis, which is very echogenic. So at the end of the day, ultrasound for upper extremity injuries in kids continues to show utility. This paper certainly adds to that, particularly in the distal forearm. A little bit less strong uh, with regards to the evidence of the elbow and the humerus and these other areas, but the distal forearm just has a lot of literature suggesting that ultrasound works in this area. And in fact, ultrasound might have higher accuracy than our, quote, gold standard x-rays.